Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm in the car. I'm driving. And I'm driving back to Vermont from a tournament. It's fun. As long-time listeners know, I go to a lot of tournaments. Don't usually compete. We usually have the whistle kick booth. You can tell from the video if you're watching the video of this. Yes, I'm trying to get more video going. That I'm not in the the kick mobile, the vehicle that is capable of carrying the whistle kick booth. I'm in my car, which is much smaller, because I went to referee and support some people. Just kind of have fun, right? Headed back. But there was something that came up at the event today that I wanted to talk about that I thought was worth sharing. The audio going well. Audio seems fine. All right, we're going to tuck that over there. I want to talk about forms. Many of you know that I love forms. I, mean, I love martial arts in general, but I love forms. I love doing forms. I love working with people on forms. I love learning new forms. Love forms. But there's something that I've been seeing that I'm finally able to articulate well, and I thought I would share it for those of you that were interested. When you start out, especially when you're new to martial arts and you're learning forms, you're spending a lot of time not just remembering the form, memorizing it, but learning how to manipulate your body. You know, at this point, if you taught me a new form, I wouldn't have to spend a lot of time working on what a front kick is. I've done a front kick for a long time. Maybe I have to vary the height or, or the placement about it some, in some way. Maybe it's a jumping front kick. Maybe it's coming out of a weird stance or footwork. But I'm not going to have to put the same amount of time in to not only learn the form, but to make my front kick better. As you get better at martial arts in general, more and more of your time in forms is spent on things specific to that form rather than general technique. But on the other side of learning any form, let's say you've spent a few years with a form, you know how to do the movements, you understand the application of the movements, which I think is important in any form. Even if the application is silly, because let's face it, the application or bunkai as it's called in a lot of Japanese styles, Sometimes it's kind of silly, doesn't make a lot of sense. That's okay. Not all forms are designed exclusively for practical application and self-defense. But regardless, on the other side of that is something else. And if you've ever watched someone who's really good at forms do their form, you start to see it. And they start to embody this form. They start to present it in a way that you can see the battle unfolding. You can see all of these people that they're facing and exchanging with and winning. And on the other side of that, and this is what I want to talk about today, the place where if you watch two masters compete, two exceptionally good forms competitors compete, and one of them is clearly better than the other, it is usually because of one thing, and it's their ability to work the space between the movements. Now, I'm not a musician, but I once read or heard somewhere along the way, and this for some reason stuck with me, that the best musicians in the world are not only playing the notes, they're playing the space between the notes. And the best people that do forms aren't just doing the movements. They are intentional about the space between the movements. What do I mean about that, by that? Your timing in between your movements isn't always exactly the same. There are times when you're connecting movements quickly, other times where it's slower. Sometimes it's intentionally slow. The dramatic elements in forms don't usually come from 
throwing the technique. Sometimes, sometimes it's uh, a really interesting, exciting, dramatic sequence. But oftentimes, it's when people demonstrate their patience in between their movements that we see something that really resonates with us. Perfect example. I'm not going to say who, but somebody who has been on the show, someone that I'm enjoying working with in her forms, took first place in both her weapons and her open hand form today. And her weapons form was fast. It was good. But she's spent more of her time lately working her open hand form. And there are some people who may watch it and think, there were some parts in there that were really slow. Because in a sense, they were. But while she was doing these movements slowly, it was very clear that there was intention and strength and confidence to not only the movements, but the spaces in between. She didn't have to rush what was happening. She was presenting that form in a way that was very clearly winning. Whether you look at it as she believed she was winning her division or she was envisioning the battle that she was winning, the people scoring her form, to be honest, really had no choice because she owned that ring today. And the way she showed them that that was her ring was the confidence in between the movements. So here's my suggestion. If this concept kind of escapes you, if it's not something that you have someone on your end that can articulate it better or demonstrate it, hopefully you do. There are some amazing forms practitioners out there. On this show, when we talk about amazing forms practitioners, we tend to talk about Riku Usami. She's an amazing competitor, does fantastic forms, and she has mastered the space between the movements. So you can look that up on YouTube. R-I-K-A is her first name. But if you want to start to work on this yourself, here's what I think you should do. Take your very first form. Do it a few times the way you're used to. Then go through it and do it the way it seems appropriate if it's acting out a battle, that you're winning that battle. Do that two or three times. You're gonna have some high energy parts and some lower energy parts, parts where you're moving fast, parts where you're moving slowly. And then after you've done that a few times, imagine that what you're doing is a fight scene in a movie. If you watch old kung fu movies, Bruce Lee was fantastic at this. There were things he would do that were space in between. The famous parts, that, that fight scene in Enter the Dragon, where he tastes his own blood, that's still part of the fight scene. It's part of the battle, but it's space in between. Now, I'm not suggesting you should step into Forbes competition with a bloody face and taste your own blood. That would be kind of ridiculous. But to go through it and imagine, what would this look like if I was choreographing it for a movie? Where is the high and the low? Because you need that contrast to create the most dramatic effect. Maybe it's when you're changing direction and you look slowly. Maybe it's in some footwork where you step one foot in front of the other and you do that really confidently, slowly, and maybe in your style you try to keep your head level and you demonstrate 
that you aren't moving. When I teach forms for competition, or rather when I'm working with someone on their form for competition, we talk about it as a show, a presentation. You're acting. If you were to get out there and you were to do your form in such a way that you're demonstrating the best way to do all of those movements for self-defense, that would be as fast and as powerful as possible through the entire thing. And if you've ever used your martial arts in some kind of a, a semi-realistic situation, you know that uh, the quality of your movements is, is going to be compromised. They don't call, they don't come out as polished and perfect as we would like them to. So the most applicable version of your forms aren't going to be the most dramatic versions. So we think about presentation. And maybe I'll do a whole episode on this. If you want an episode on martial arts forms for competition and some of the common themes that I find when I work with someone, when I help them adjust their form for competition, give me some feedback. Jeremy at whistlekick.com or your comment at the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or hit us on social media at whistlekick. Whatever works for you is great for us. But just remember, when you present your form, you're acting. And the more time you spend acting and being confident in your acting skill, the better your results. And yes, there's a lot of carryover to the rest of what you do, not only in martial arts, but in life. That's probably why I love forms so much. So that's all. I'm going to stop rambling. I hope you guys like these impromptu episodes. I don't have any notes. I generally have notes. Remember the early days when I would script the entire episode? Woo, that took a long time. But I like doing that too. Maybe I'll do another one of those again. Anyway, that's all I've got today. Thank you for tuning in and listening or watching, whichever the case may be. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great day, great rest of the week. Get out there and work on your form. See if you can make them better. And by extension, make yourself a better martial artist. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.